because that's, you know, uh, let's just be honest. It's one of the biggest reasons we brought you in here is because I think, you know, I think there's so many, you know, you have all these gelatos and cakes and different things going around. Um, you know, anybody who knows me and has known me a while knows that, like, I'm a chem guy. I've been a chem guy for years. I love that fuel halitosis, you know, maybe not. It's your heart. Yeah, maybe not the most appealing, but, um, you know, it's it's the stuff, you know, I always say to people, like, if you want something that tests over 30%, Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Jug Dealers podcast. All things cannabis and lifestyle related brought to you by the good people of 5e. And now we have jugdealers.net. Today, we are in studio with my good buddy, Peabud Mike. Um, welcome to the studio. Welcome to the Jug Den. Thanks. Um, today, you know, we're here, you know, as usual, we love to bring in guests and tell the stories of cannabis that we think are relevant, you know, especially with all the crazy directions that things are going nowadays. Um, you know, Mike and I have actually known each other quite a while. It's good to see you again. It's bro. good to see you too. Dude. Hell yeah. We've, uh, you know, we were actually just discussing before the show. We met originally at the original ADSI, the which- first, Yeah, the first one. Yeah, which, you know, when I look back on it now was such, it was like, there were so many characters at, at that event, you know, AJ. In a really small house, too, yeah, which yeah, was really yeah. cool because we were all- like on top of each other. Well, as I remember, as I remember, like uh, the event was supposed to be somewhere else and, you know, we were getting bust in and it yeah. got moved that day. It was, I think it was, if it wasn't raining, it was snowing or something, but the the weather was all jacked up and, you know. That's right. They bust some, I, I got a ride, but. They bust some people in. Yeah, it was it was definitely an interesting event, but the the amount of people that were there and and the people that we had access to Fletcher, Irock, Nickety, you know, Josh D, so many Fuji, so many so different many. people, um, JJ, you know, and JJ. so uh, and you and you know, as I remember, your crew came pretty hard representing Cam D, as I remember, right? Yeah, Rob and I both had. Uh, Chem D and Chem 4. Yep. Now you're talking Rob Carney, right? Carney. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I think he won year two. Yep, yep. DSS. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's dive in. Let's dive into the story. You know, I don't want to go too far, too fast, because I always like to, uh, I always like to hear about people's roots, where they grew up, how. Right, they before grew we up. get too far, we should say that uh, Jaron still at Spanibus. That's right. So I didn't that's even. Why, I didn't yeah, even. Yeah. I, I, I'd forgotten. We're but Jaron, to- Jaron, the reason that it's just me today is because we didn't want to leave you guys out a week, and the Jayhawk is over in Spain doing his thing with uh, what was Cinco E, right? Uh, yeah, I didn't even think that was a real thing. Yeah, no, it, but it, it is. That's our that's our European. We're five, we're five eight, and so in Spain they yeah, have cinco yeah, eight. Yeah, that's our European counterpart. Sh- shouldn't it be cinco ocho? It should, <laughs> but we're keeping it. We're keeping it half a minute. All right, you know. Either way, we do miss Jaron today, and we're going to be psyched when he's back on the next episode. Uh, I'm this sure is a he's very having temp- a good time. Um, I, you know, that's one of the reasons I forgot. I'm going to be honest because I'm sure he is having a very <laughs> yeah, good time. Don't cry for Jaron; he's living right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, let's start at the beginning. You know, uh, if you don't mind, tell me a little bit about yourself, where you grew up. You know, how you grew up. Uh, you know, a little bit about your story. I grew up in Connecticut. Well, we moved around. My father worked for Eastman Kodak, so we were constantly moving nice. around. But I did you ever live up in uh, Rochester? That's where I was born. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. So I'm going to a wedding next week for my nephew. Uh, the other nephew got married up in Rochester, okay. and we stayed at one of the we stayed at one of the the Kodak mansions. Okay. Because yeah. they, you know, and so I didn't know the history of Rochester. Yeah, that's where Kodak. Yeah, yeah that's really cool. So, so yeah, okay, I was born there. My, and I think one of my brothers was born there, but uh, I did most of my time, my growing up time in Connecticut, uh, right outside New York City. Mm-hmm. So we used to get like really good, this is in the eighties, uh, you know, shit coming in from New York city off the boat. Like yep. Yeah. Pure Afghan. 
Uh, do you so you grew up? Did you have like a normal? You, you had a pretty normal family though. Totally normal family. My parents were together, and I had three, uh, two brothers and a sister. Uh huh. I mean, we fought like cats and dogs, but we love each other now, and <laughs> yeah, had a pretty normal, normal upbringing, um, which I'm glad. <laughs> right, right, right. When so so when. What, what's your, what's your first, I always like to ask people, what's your first weed smoking experience? Do you remember your first weed smoking experience? Totally remember it. I was not into, I think I drank once and I got super ill and just hung over. Uh huh. Just did not like it. And then we smoked uh, a friend of mine got some you know, shit. We how, how old, how old are you? 14. 14. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, we smoked some, I didn't get high. It was just off a wooden bowl. Right. And then maybe two days later we did a big like bong. Was it like Mexican swag yeah, type swag. the brown swag? Okay. You know, red hair sense. Yep. Yep. They called it. Uh, and then I did a bong hit and then that just changed. I was, I got high and it was pretty much, <laughs> that. that was it. I was like, cool. You're like, this I, is I pretty cool. Drink, you know? So, uh, they really got into, you know, smoking. I had older brothers and sisters, so they kind of really got me into smoking too. And they had connections. So I would get, you know, quarter pounds, sell it just to be decent able. stuff, but still that kind good. of brown weed. No, good. At the beginning, it was just, we just called it like red hair sense. It was yeah, just, yeah. a lot of red hairs on it. Uh, yeah, that's why it's funny. It's, yeah, it, you yeah. know, for us old heads, you know, we always refer to it like where we got it from or what it looked like. You know, we got you got some Humboldt County or some Tompkins County or it was more Floyd, geographical you know, than a hundred percent, a hundred percent crazy fucking names they have today. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> definitely uh, it's definitely a, an interesting thing, and it wasn't you know. You know, at the time you got what you got, you didn't, you know, it wasn't, you didn't have choices, you know, you know what I mean? Whatever you had, that's what you got. Exactly. So, um, so I know, I just, you know, I've known you personally, you know, we mentioned in the beginning of the episode, I've known you for, you know, quite a while at this point, but, um, what, like, what role, when did you start seeing the Grateful Dead and like, what kind of role did that play in your access to cannabis? Well, I got into the dead for my <clears throat> my two older brothers. They they toured in the early eighties. Okay, like what year did you start seeing the dead? I started seeing about eighty five. Oh yeah, so you got some you got some ju- you got some juicy show. you got some juicy stuff. You got Beg- some Brent. You got some Brent. My mom to go. <laughs> yeah, with my brothers. How old were you? Uh, 14. Wow. 14, yeah. I think I started seeing the dead. I was about 15, but that was 1990, okay. you know? So I was a little bit behind you. But at that age, I didn't really appreciate it. Like I would have. You know, Your brothers took you. You were kind of like the mascot. Yeah, I, they, they took me. <laughs> I, I, had, I had stole, like listened to their tapes. So I pretty much was really educated and, on songs I would just play bootlegs all yep. day long whenever I could. And uh so yeah, they started taking me and then I would go probably eighty five is when I started kind of going on my own. I was a freshman in high school. Yeah. Going with friends. Uh luckily I lived in Connecticut, so on East Coast tour I was pretty central location. Is that Brennan? Is this Brennan Burn like Brandon your Brennan Burns in Jersey? That's an hour cool. away. Hartford's an yep. hour away. Worcester was two hours away. Uh, the Spectrum. That, that's the yeah. I mean yeah. The I saw him at the Spectrum. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the heart. That's that the heartland. A few hours away. It was funny when I came when I came through Central New York uh, for that wedding. I didn't realize you know some of the, that theater that's right. There. I think I think it is Brennan Burn. But it's that's just Jersey. Yeah, where uh, there's one, I'm trying to think. It's like s- uh, kind of South Central New York, but but uh, Nassau. Yeah, Nassau. That's what yeah. it was. You know, and I remember coming through there, and I was like, dude, many shows I, there too. I ne- you know, it's funny. <laughs> I never went to Nassau because my friends would always get arrested there. You know, they had that. They had that judge on site. The worst place on the East Coast. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I had to. I never went to Nassau to see a show, but I definitely the went there to bail some friends out. Yeah. My buddy walked around one year with going hash for a ticket, hash for a ticket, and got busted. So was this, I mean, were those shows some of your first access to like better quality Definitely. flower, better? Cause I, I mean, I always, you know, Eugene and I talk about it a lot and um, you know, I always say how the grateful dead tour really, it brought the good flower around. Like it's, you know, it, everybody came out from California, the tour started on the East coast yep. and then it would work its way backwards. And as it worked its way backwards, it would, they'd get rid of all the drugs and the LSD and Trading the, the clones, cannabis. Uh, I mean, it was, were the you first see, I mean, Facebook. were you seeing, were really you seeing clones back Facebook. then? Seeing clones back then. Crazy. Uh, I never, cause I, I guess I was pretty young. You know, Jerry died when I was like, I think 17 or 18, Okay, but I, and I, I definitely did some stuff on dead tour, but I, I mainly saw a flower. I guess I don't, you know, it's 30 years ago at this point, you know, I don't remember seeing I mean, plants clones weren't that like really like people, but you'd run into the guy. Them, yeah. But you would correspond with someone, however yep. you did back then and go, you know, can you bring me that cut to the show? Then you would meet him and, you know, preserve it till you got home. <laughs> so, um, so you're, you're seeing the grateful dead, you finish up high school. Did you, did you end up going to college here? Did you go or back I East went to, I applied to one school, Western state college in, uh, in Gunnison. Yep. Uh, got in, <laughs> they pretty much let anyone back in, when, back, back when it had, I think, you know, it's funny. I was just in changed the name. I was, uh, I was going to say, I was West just in Gunnison and they changed the name since then because college back when you were there, it wasn't just Western state. It was wasted, wasted state. state. I remember. Exactly. <laughs> so it was a wasted state. It sounds good. So, and that was the, I mean, as far as snow, that was the heyday. I mean, that was we were getting a lot of snow in Crested Butte. So I, Went out there and then within, I was in the dorm within two weeks, me and a guy that lived down the, down the way, down the hallway, we got the fuck out of there. Moved, <laughs> moved up to Crested Butte. <laughs> uh, and it was a way different town back then. Oh like God. way, it was a true, in get in true the, Colorado mountain town. Go into Kachivers to get a mushroom drink. Right, go right. A spiked with mushroom. Yeah. <laughs> pretty cool town. The cops... You could grow there. The cops really turned their eye when the feds came in. They, so this is like the mid nineties. This is a late eighties. Late eighties. Wow. I man. moved there in 86. Wow. So, uh, but yeah, totally different town. And what, what kind of, what kind of, uh, what kind of herb were people growing Peabod. back then? Well, we were getting pea bud from Paonia, which is right over the pass. Uh huh. Kepler pass. And the story on that is really quick is, uh, in the late sixties in Humboldt, they were growing and the feds came in and kind of pushed them out. They moved a big group of them moved to Paonia, mm -hmm. which is like perfect elevation. It's like a real, Colorado. it's kind of a banana belt. Yeah. yeah if you like, know anything about central Colorado. Exactly. So like a lot of good fruit comes, comes out of there. Jaron and I always talk about the soil collide and some certain places being ideal for growing perfect. and Paonia is, is and, yeah. And, uh, you know, cold, cold nights, really warm mm -hmm. days. So mm -hmm. it really pushed the fruit, the sugars on the fruits. Uh, so this group of hippies moved there. They brought their genetics with them and they just, which was probably tons of different stuff. Uh -huh. So they started growing it. Uh, they called it pea bud peonia, pea bud, and they would grow it in between apple trees. Uh, we we're getting lots of that. Most of it was going to New York and California, but it was a professional. I mean, these guys were pros back in the, they're all seal meal pounds and just, just professional. So we would take our snowmobiles up and meet them up on the top of Kepler Pass <laughs> and then come back down. A lot of it would turn, you know, we'd get maybe an ounce of shake from the bumpy ride <laughs> in Colorado. But, uh, yeah, we started getting just a bunch of pea bud and, you know, kind of selling, selling that. So I was. So you're going up past Irwin and up that way. I mean, dude, that's that, yo, straight up. Yeah. That is some dumping, awesome. Like that's out. some gangster gangster. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. dude. Dumping out. And then, I mean, you'd always get your snowmobile stuck. 
Yeah, it's not the. This is not the some modern the, sleds that people are running today. Some of the most tired times I've ever been. Because you're on a trail, and then if you just get off it a little bit, and you just you're, you're just kind of spacing <laughs> out. It's like you just get there. You got to build up a ramp, get the thing out. But uh, yeah, good good times in Crested Butte. So tell, I mean, so. No, no. So as I remember, because I had this in my notes, were you guys doing the puck at the time too? Is that how is that involved in that? The puck came from Leadville, so yep. friends of ours went to Amsterdam, and this chick like sewed it in her sleeve. Just she went to a. They just bought these seven or eight, ten seeds, seeds just labeled hash plant and you know sharpie uh, from a some coffee shop in Amsterdam. You don't know if it's the Hayes man G13 hash plan or what? I mean, I, you know, I've grown, I've grown that Hayes man G13 and I'll be honest with you. It was terrible. It was was terrible. And the puck is is so unique. I mean, you know, anybody who's lived in Colorado a long time, you know, I want to say more than 20 years. Um, you know, I remember getting that puck and it was eight, you know, nine grand a pound, you know, and you told me about the puck. And I was like, what is this puck? Because we called it Skelly Hash Plant. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And Skelly was John Skelton was the guy that brought it into town and he grew it and he was kind of like the the holder of it. But uh, you're like, the puck, the puck. I'm like, oh my God. Because my friend Fatty started, he would come over to me and my friend's house and my friend kept it in a fly fishing Yep. container mm-hmm. and he would never throw it away so it got black as shit from the resin and my friend fatty would come over funniest guy i've ever known in my life <laughs> he would come over and be like you got any of that puck you got any of that puck finally like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about he's like the puck in the in the container so that's really <coughs> how the puck came about i don't know how it got out in mm-hmm. the name but uh yeah. Still some, I mean, <laughs> it's, I, I almost feel like that's some of my top five of all top time. Five. It's okay. just, it's just it's so changed, unique. It's changed over the years. It used to be back in the late eighties, nine, early nineties. When you had an eighth in your pocket, you walk into, so it was like roadkill skunk. People are like, who hit a skunk? Now it's kind of like a peppery kind of A1 steak sauce. Mm-hmm. The high's still there and the buds are still rock hard but uh it genetic drift or whatever they call it you know things things have, and morphology can change just depending on environment and stuff like that yeah. so uh so let's i mean let's get into the the meat and potatoes <laughs> where let's let's hear the story of the actual chem d because that's, you know, uh, let's just be honest. That's yeah. one of the biggest reasons we brought you in here is because I think, you know, I think there's so many, you know, you have all these gelatos and cakes and different things going around. Um, you know, anybody who knows me and has known me a while knows that, like, I'm a chem guy. I've been a chem guy for years. I love that fuel halitosis, you know, maybe not. Hits your heart. Yeah, maybe not the most appealing, but, um, you know, it's it's the stuff, you know, I always say to people, like, if you want something that tests over 30%, chem dog, yeah. chem dog family, that's, that's, that's your number. So we just released a batch in Florida and we're greenhouse with supplemental lighting 28%, which was good. Yeah. Chem, good chem, chem's always high. So tell us the so story of the chem, chem dog. dog. Um, so 1991 summer, uh, right before dead tour, uh, we were, Walking downtown Crested Butte, me and my friend Joe, and uh, Joe was kind of had a, we had like kind of a reputation of having money to buy weed. So this guy's like, I got this stuff called Dog Bud that came from my friend from Oregon. He's got like a pound and a half. Are you guys interested? Just like, yeah. So we got it and we could not believe what we saw. I mean, it was unlike... We've been smoking pea bud and hash plant, the scaly hash plant, which was insane. We we're like, wow, this stuff is insane. It was like a bluish tint to it, mm-hmm. what I remember. But the smell was like just fuel chem fuel. So it was called dog bud because 
Well, we're told after you smoked it, you rolled over like a dog, <laughs> which I thought was a really good name. Um, supposedly, Jerry smoked it in the late 80s. People have been telling me mm -hmm. it was one of his favorites. Um, so we started calling it chemweed because we're like, we're young. We're like, they must have pumped this full of chemicals. You know, why does it smell like this? So we started calling it chemweed. Um, so we went on dead tour that summer and brought a, a half pound of it with us, left a half pound back at home. And everyone in town was pissed because they're like, you guys are going to bring this and sell it to deadheads. You know, like, <laughs> fuck man, we want this. You get a premium <laughs> though, bro. Come on. Or, uh, I'll tell you that in a second. So we went to, I think Deer Creek was the first place we busted it out. Mm -hmm. We're like, and back then, on Dead Tour, uh, back in like the late 80s, you know, early 90s, by summertime, there was risk. The weed was scary. Yeah, it, I can I can attest to that. It was it was it, yeah. it was pretty bad in the summers. It was bad you know? in the summers. So us just saying we have kind bud, it was like holy shit. And that's all you had to say back then. It didn't it didn't, didn't matter. You you weren't out there like gelato, this no, you, all you said was kind bud. Kind bud. Kind, KB, <laughs> KB. KB. That's it. <laughs> so we had we took my friend Subaru out and we sold a ace for seventy five bucks. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna fault you, bro. That's what they cost in Jersey now. Uh, so the most expensive pot we've i've ever sold in my life but anyway we sold one to one guy and it was he was like holy shit like he just he lost his shit went back told the word spread we had a line of it looked like we had nitrous tank i i know yeah I, I, I know i've been there i've been there waiting to buy a suite for 75 bucks so we sold it <laughs> to one guy named greg a really cool guy he's 17 young kid I uh, just remember he had glasses, and so we kind of befriended him that weekend. Uh, we sold him, I think, a quarter ounce. Or maybe and for those of you who don't know about the Grateful Dead, you know, Deer Creek was a was a camp. You know, they were camping all around there. It was a three day event. It's out in the middle of what, Noblesville, Indiana. It's it's in Farm, the middle of farmland. It's, yeah, there, and back then it was smaller as far as what accommodations there were around. And so you know, it was three days of pretty much total debauchery. And and you know if. It, it was the type of thing where if people bought flour off of you the first day, they came and tracked you down they the second. Yeah, they were. knew exactly <laughs> where you were. <laughs> so, where you so were. for people who have never been to those kinds of shows, you know, this was pre any festivals, no Bonnaroo, no any of those things existed. So, no cell the phone. yeah, and the, yeah, no <laughs> cell phones. So the Grateful Dead was like this traveling circus of. Um, you know, drugs and all kinds of other things. So, so yeah, like the that the rest of that tour, people would see us and be like, "Do you have any more of that?" Yeah, we're like, "No, it's all." It's I've all been there. there. Yeah, I've it's been there. Gone. So we sold one to a guy named Greg, and we kind of befriended him the weekend and exchanged phone numbers on a piece of paper. And uh, <laughs> so tour tour kept going. Uh, he went his way. We went our way. Did you come back to Colorado we after? Went, I think we maybe saw one more show and then we came back to Colorado. Uh, he went because there were, I think it ended in Denver that year. So I mm -hmm. think we just came back and then we went up to Denver. So uh, Greg told me he smoked his last bowl in Denver or something at the chem dog. So as soon as he got back to mass, he called, called us, called Joe and called myself. And then, um, we started sending them pee bud mm -hmm. email. Uh, and then we had like a quarter pound of the dog bud left. We sent them, I'm not, I don't remember an ounce, two ounces, whatever. But in one of those ounces, he found 13 seeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 13. Um, 13, which is kind it's of a weird. beautiful number. It's, just, it's, it's so my, specific. It's it, my it just, favorite. It lets you know how like glorious it must have been. Well, when you not look, ten, thirteen. Thirteen. When you look at what came out of it, because it wasn't just Chem D that came out of it. You know, there was more. No, the first in ninety one, he popped four. Uh, the Chem ninety one and the Chem sister both came up. 
Uh, the other two are male. You threw them away. <laughs> Man, what you what you wouldn't give to have those males nowadays. Remember when we used to throw trim and males away? Remember those days? Could you imagine what the? It's funny. Like you ask a lot of people, like if they could get one plant back, what would it be? And honestly, one of those males would probably be really nice. Oh my god! So he was young. He. The way he explained it to me is he was out for just growing bud. You mm-hmm. know? He didn't want males. He just wanted to grow weed to smoke. But know? but the thing is too, like, you know, here, you know, that the, the bud you had was really good. So you're going to say to yourself, well, the seeds off it, they've got to be good. Yeah, you know, exactly. So he, so in 91, he kept the sister and the 91 Yep. The sister died. They have an S one. A uh, guy named Bundy found a really nice S one. It's just nice. As good I've as never that. actually. I've grown everything else. I haven't grown the chemist. Very similar to the D. Uh, I love the ninety one. The ninety one is one of my potency. favorites. Ninety one is. Is <laughs> that's the heat. Thirty some years later, it's still it's going it, strong. <clears throat> that one's a lot of changes in smell. Mm-hmm. Um, it used to be <clears throat> you can still smell the roadkill in there. Mm-hmm. Like if you have, if you crack your bag open in, in your house and then you leave and you come back and you kind of smell that skunk, but it was like roadkill. You walk into the grocery store and people are like, we had a skunk. Uh, but that's still around. Really hard to grow. Finicky. Yeah, it is. I mean, if you don't have the dedication to grow it um, in a commercial sense, we've tried to do it a couple of times in Florida, the bud came out really nice, but just not a lot of it. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, you're not hitting the two the pounds of light struggling numbers. with it and cloning it. The, the girl was struggling cloning it. So we've, uh, I've said to people a lot too, like nowadays people clone under led, a lot of people clone under leds and stuff like that. Yeah. And, in my opinion, the stuff, the, the sour D's, the chem D's, the stuff that was bred in the sun or under T fives, it's yeah. just grow. It, it just clones better under T fives. It yeah. grows better under it halides or, or HPSs. And, and I think it's just, I, I, you know, a lot of the other stuff, the newer stuff nowadays that was bred under LEDs, of course it's going to react better yeah. under LEDs, but that's one of those things where, you know, I think with the chems, they, they, they like the old school light, you know, tough to, tough to grow. Uh, chem D is a good production chem four. Problem with the chems is they're after you package them, they, they brown out. Yeah. The bag, especially that chem four. Don't let, oh, the chem four. For it's sure. notorious for it. The thing, the two, out. the two That's things, we don't sell it the two things I disliked about the chem <laughs> four the most. So hold on. So, the, the beaten stepchild, the yeah, M4. It, dude, it's <laughs> it's it's so delicious, but it gets this tan appearance to it. It's not even brown. It's like a it's like a golden color. Golden color. And then it takes freaking forever to finish. Like you could just you it could never just, looks like it's yeah, done. it never looks like it's done. Exactly. You know, yeah. I mean that's that's where it's just I always tell people, you know, here's a quick little plug, but I always tell people uh the winter frost is a great way to get it to finish because yeah, that stuff could just go, you know, 80 plus days if you just let it go. So, so you guys found the chem 91 and the chem assist, the first round, those first round of seeds. And then he put the seeds in the freezer. Okay. And then in 2000, he popped three more seeds. So he waited another nine years to pop. Yep. And then what came out of that round? So he popped three. C labeled them C, D, and E. C and E did not come up. They they died. Uh huh. D came up, and that's Chem D. To me, that's that's the one. That's mm-hmm. that is the closest that I remember to the dog butt. To the actual dog butt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The smell, the taste, the strength, everything. And it's and you know it, it's such a it's such it's still to this day. You know, it holds steady as being such a unique palette. Um, you know, it's funny because the GMO has that palette, but why does the GMO have that palette? They do. <laughs> because of because of the parenting, you know. And it's it, it's funny because you know, again, I, I just it ticks so many boxes. You know, one of the things I always used to see working with Phil Haig was 
He's like, bro, you want stuff that wins. You want stuff that has commercial viability. Breed it with chem dog, yep. you know, because it's going to be high THC. It's going to give you the bulk. You know, the biggest problem I've always had with chem dog is just bag appeal. You know what I mean? It just, and, and when I say bag appeal, yeah, four, it doesn't have 2023 20, bag appeal. Yeah. You know what I mean? As far as for you and me, I like, uh, you know, I mean, look, <laughs> I think the chem D looks, be- I mean, if you look at it in the sunlight, the bag in the sunlight, it looks beautiful. No, it's before I can tell you, it doesn't look that great at all, but, uh, I smoke on effects you know that's yeah no i agree okay. yeah you yeah. crumble it up anyway right i mean yeah who cares fuck. what it looks like when you smoke it <laughs> so um so who so you now you've got 91 and and greg kept it going that entire time yep 91 and the sis and uh and he is he is chem dog correct yep so just so everybody knows and you know chem dog glass um does just pardon my, does the VA skunk fit in there at all? Did he was, he was carrying so that as he well. He was carrying it. I mean, the, the the story goes that, you know, Greg had lost the 91. Mm-hmm. And he had done a trade with Jason for that. So Jason kind of kept that thing going. Okay. Uh, other, I've heard that Greg had it or friends had it backed up. But Jason really kept that thing going. So without him, you know, the 91 could have been. Could have been lost. Gone. Yeah. And that's his favorite one. He lo- I mean, the guy loves the 91. I'm the, I'm the D guy. He's the 91. I'm a little bit. I got to be honest with you. Now. I'm a, uh, <clears throat> as far as entire package, I'm a little bit more 91. Yeah. As far as effect, it, it's got to be the D all day because the D is just. It puts me where I want to be. Like it, that's what I tell people. Like it puts me in a mood where I'm talk. I'm, I'm a pretty introverted guy. I, I open up, I talk, I, I feel good, feel good about my life. Just, <laughs> you know, if I'm bumming out. Put that just- in your pod, put that in your <laughs> podcast, uh, Grambo. You know, want to feel good about your life? Smoke, Smoke some, some chem food. dog. So, um, so Greg's holding it down. 2001, uh, they pop 2000, 2000 they pop the other down. seeds. Um, you know, people are holding it down. Are you, did you get a chance to grow it in that time where they, did they, no, it's kind of funny because we kind of lost touch and we kind of got back, um, in touch with Charlie on the forums. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was actually, you know, it's uh, funny that grow and I see that meant to be one of the questions I put in there that I, did you mess with the forums? Like what was, what where yeah, we were totally you? Totally mess with forums. What was yeah. your handle? I was Peabud. You were Peabud. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't think Mike just Peabud, but um, we were hearing about this shit coming out of Massachusetts that tasted like, and me and my friend Joe were like, dude, that just sounds like the pot we sent. The dog bread. Yeah. Yeah. It just sounds like it. So we got in touch with, some whatever got in touch with Greg and he's like, Oh my God, I can't believe, you know, we found each other. And, yeah, <laughs> I'd be growing it and blah, blah, The blah. miracle of the internet. I have six seeds left or whatever. He sent us four of the original seeds. Uh-huh. And that's the kind of guy Greg is. Right. So he sent us four of the originals. We labeled them one, two, three, four, the fours, the, the, one, the, f- two the four and three are still around. Yeah. I think there's, Inspector may have them. Okay. Uh, the guys that his buddies may have them. Uh, they were both females. They were all females. Wow. All, all four. Of them. Wow. Yeah. All four. Of them. And then you guys found the four. The four was like the best yielder, dude. If it didn't turn tan, dude, it it, it is. Trust lemony. me, I, it, it's. it's oh, I love that. I love and hate that plant. Like lemony and. It got can, can I ask because Chem Four is one of my favorite strains, and I might have to ask you if there's seeds somewhere I could find of it. Did, did the browning affect the flavor at all, no, or was it just no. just the bag it's appeal? It's just a bag appeal okay. thing, man. And it's it's so because I've wanted to grow that literally like my whole life. Chem Four, it's, awesome. it's the it's the chemical toilet flavor. It's, you know, dude, it is it's just, great weed. Oh, I mean, I love it. You know, Smoke I, it fast. 
<laughs> Done. I like the way you think put it, people put it in the freezer, you know? And I think, you know, and you would think on those qualities, it would be really good for breeding. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's got, you know, if you can pull through, breed it with a purple so that you're getting some, it you know. It hits you as soon as you exhale, That which all the chems do, but the four for me the yes. most, as soon as I exhale that, I'm feeling the effect. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's great flower. Instant. It really is. Yeah. Um, so at this point, you know, we're talking, we're getting into the deep into the 2000s, you're in the forum scene starting to get, starting to see these things resurface. Um, you know, did, were you starting to grow again up in Crested Butte as far I as some of that? I was in California at the time. Okay. And we got the seeds. So, you know, Joe, I was, Joe and I were, I, I've known Joe forever. Uh, and we were growing together in Napa and uh, growing the four, growing, you know, whatever, uh, selling them to, uh, Harborside. Okay. So we'd go and just bring in like 10 pounds of weed. So prop 215 stuff. Duffel bag. Yeah. Just leave it with them and then come back in seven days and pick up, pick up cash. Bro, you've been, I mean, wild. yeah, you're dude. It was wild. Well, it's funny because people talk about legacy and what legacy is. And I mean, we're going deep on that one. We're going deep <laughs> on was, that one. It was wild. Well, I grew, I was one of the first ones to grow the star dog. So I got JJ sent. We, we, did you know, so did you know JJ and AJ and all those guys at this point? Through the form, yeah, I knew them when I was in California we were growing. We sent JJ the four and, uh, you know, he did tremendous things with that. JJ's the man, dude. JJ, I, you know, I have mad, he's, mad, mad respect he's for JJ. so smart and... I mean, a lot of people don't know. He was an iron, he was an iron worker for years. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, he's he's working. yeah, he's one of the he's Mother, completely one of the real badass, ones, dude. Badass. <laughs> I'm supposed to have he's him quiet, on one of these he's days. Quiet, very but quiet. You get to know him. He's till he has your back, and he's like, and he's been holding down. You know, I mean, <clears throat> he's never wavered. No, you know, he's been holding down what it's he holds guy. down and doing it really, really well for a really if it long wasn't time. For him, if I would be unhappy in this world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, luckily I, you know, I've, I've between ADSI and just hanging out with you, I've managed to spend a, a good amount of time with JJ and we've kind of become friends over the years. And I have, yeah, such an incredible amount of I've respect for him. what I lived here. We had him over, you know, when his wife was on the East in Jersey and stuff, we had him over for dinner all the yep, time. And yep. He was out here a while. He loves to fish. So oh, he was, big, big he was fish. out here a while. Um, so, you know, I guess fast forward a little bit, you know, you, what, so how did you, how did you migrate from California back to here? And how did you, you know, I guess you were, you know, you were kind of in the quasi legal scene in, in California. Yeah. Why? Well, Starting Colorado, moved out to California, uh, kind of was sick of California. Um, mm -hmm. My wife and I were just fed up. We lived in Redwood City. We lived in Berkeley. We lived in just, it was just too much. You go, you want to go camping, you got to. It's an ordeal. Plan it. Yeah. Eight months in advance. So we were just sick of it. So we're like, we're going to move back to Colorado and move to Crested Butte. Um, uh, had our kid there yeah, and had, he was premature. So Bobby was premature. Uh, and our kids are basically, basically the, same the same age. So age. they, they've hung out a bunch. And so this is what, this is 2012. Yeah. Yeah. You know, about this is yeah, about yeah. 11, 12 years ago. Yeah. Nice. So, and this is right when the legal scene in Colorado is like yeah. in its infancy, but taking off quite strongly you know and that's kind of when i <clears throat> was kind of like didn't want to be i didn't want to be exposed you know yeah you were still a forum guy still yeah underground so bike holly mike yeah uh he's like shout out to bike shout out to bike love the guy dude the man the man uh so he contacted me he's like do you want to see like a room full of chem dog at phil's place Phil Haig. Yeah. 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 Like, Fuck yeah, I do. So we went down there. I forget what that place is called. Mindful. 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 Yeah. Huge. It, dude, it would at, the at the time. Yeah. 
spin it <clears throat> that size. Yeah, but at the time insane. it was it was groundbreaking. I mean, it was it was an indoor so acre of EPAPs or you know I think Gavitas and EPAPs, but single uh, double ended fixtures. It was the first time anybody in cannabis had really seen anything of that scale, and Phil was groundbreaking at the it time. Is, Phil's the man. I mean, I think he comes from. His, he, he, he his grew from, family. uh, he grew, I believe poinsettias down in Texas. He grew up growing, okay. growing pink poinsettias okay. in Texas. I haven't talked to him in a while. <clears throat> I would love to get back and in touch with him. Hell yeah. Well, sure. we can, we can make that happen. Cool. <laughs> cool. Phil's a good guy. He feels one of the best. He really is. I've got me a lot of, when I was started growing up my house, he got me, he's like anything you want, you know? Uh -huh. So it was, he's, I owe that guy a lot. Good dude. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's, it's great to hear. I mean, you know, for me to fill a lot of my career um, and a lot of the, you know, the good decisions I've made have been with Phil and because of Phil. Yeah, so I have nothing but guy. nothing but love for him. Yeah. So then I kind of was like, all right, and I'm now I'm out and I did the whole IG thing and all this stuff. And uh, I went to the Cannabis Cup in Denver, the one that was just Pack. 14, I think Pack it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 13 crazy. or 14, which was, it was bananas. It was yeah, crazy. I think 14 was the banger. That was the, yeah. uh, that was the 30,000 people. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, the yeah, first yeah. time. That was the first time I did like a, uh, uh, someone gave me a hot dab. Oh, yeah. And like <laughs> I, I had a panic attack yeah, and yeah. I completely, fr I mean, yeah, that, that cannabis cup was it's crazy. Bananas. It was both professional and chaos. It was you beautiful. You didn't have like a place to hang. <laughs> you were just like stuck in that crowd. <laughs> like a, it was the line outside to get the in, like, get in was, was crazy. crazy. Yeah, this. I mean, I. You know, it's funny because I really do. I I miss events like that. that I thought was that was such a so such a fun time to be involved with things. Everybody knew each other. I mean, it was like. It really, it was you know, new and before the MSOs were involved, everybody was like, it was like yeah. a big family. I mean, I really look at that um, as far as the culture side of, of cannabis. I really look at that as kind of the golden age because yeah. we were all just really, it was just a really tight time. It was cool. It was a liberating feeling. You're like, you just hadn't, I had never felt that before. Agreed. Agreed. It, you know, and that's, that's what, I mean, that's what cannabis really was about for a lot of us was, oh, yeah. and we just, you know, a lot of us didn't want to get arrested anymore yeah, and, and being of, in a position, especially at those cups where like you could drop the veil of the forum, you know, and you could be like, Hey, you know, in which in some cases it wasn't so good because it's like, well, Hey, you've been saying all of this shit about me online on the forums and now we're face to face. I met a lot of guys <laughs> like Tommy. I met Tommy from Dominion C. Uh -huh. I met him. I've been talking to him for years and uh, actually brought him a, a puck cut. And uh, then he brought that to Jason. So it was kind of like a really cool way that I finally got to meet him. That's and awesome. All that stuff. Uh, and then I met the guys from Elite Cannabis. Uh huh. Those are, uh, God, I haven't heard that name in forever. Brian and uh, those guys had the bomb. Yeah, it's f so funny you mentioned that because I think Virginia I even, guess, I think I even have a sticker on my computer and it, and it's funny because they had the B yeah. and I, have, I haven't heard the, I haven't heard that name yeah. in forever, bro. Yeah. All good. I mean, knowledgeable organic growers, living soil. Yeah. Those dudes like were, best. those dudes were the best. the best. And now Graham has got crickets and cicada seed. Shout out to those guys. Mm -hmm. If you guys want good, real deal, proven, tested genetics. Nice. And, and Hey man, let's, let's hear it for tested puck. genetics. They're putting out some good puck crosses. Okay. Good, okay. You heard stuff. it here. You heard it here. So what is like it? Crickets and cicadas? Yeah. Just like the grateful dead. Song, do you crickets and cicadas sing? Nice, They're a different tune. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. Uh, but him and his him and his uh, wife do that, and they're, they're the same. Shame off. Jaren's not here; he would have enjoyed that reference. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, those guys are those guys are great. I met those guys. I started working for them. We were uh, a CBD company, so uh -huh. we're doing CBD. I remember that. Yeah, and. Uh, Greenhouse, so I got a lot of. You met Bond experience. Villain at the time, Dave, but Dave, Dave Bond Villain, owner. another another G. Dave is unbelievable human. I mean, one of the smartest people. Honestly, we got to get him in for God. an interview. You need him in here because he that guy is so smart. 
And he's doing guitars now. I mean, it's funny because uh, I've he gotten into a couple Slayer shows because of him. And yeah. like, I didn't even know I was into Slayer as much as I am. But his yeah, father Dave's the man. was a bad uh, I mean, he's a really good interview. He'd be it really w- yeah, he's got a great story. It's, great funny. Story. I, it's funny you brought that up. Cause so I haven't talked to him in a while. You know? So you were working for those guys for so a while? for those guys. We're just doing, you know, whatever. We did an outdoor season, but mostly in, in the greenhouse on mm-hmm. the Longmont. And then we opened up a store. I was kind of working in the store, uh, selling. A lot of people co- traveling from all over the state to come grab our organic supplies, mm-hmm. rock dust, and you know, all that stuff. Uh, worm castings. And- Dude, the glacial rock dust, bro. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's the that's the <laughs> lick, bro. A lot yeah. of people don't know about that. And for those of the, for those who don't know, because we kind of skipped over it, your degree is yeah. in. I am. I have a good degree in agronomy with emphasis in golf course management. So I was a golf course superintendent for years. That's kind of where I got into yep. growing. My mom was a big grower. She got me into growing stuff. So you, I mean, you actually, kn- you know, stuff, you actually know yeah, I mean, real I went things. To school. I don't know how well I did in school, my 10% retention level or whatever. Right. It right. Is. But I did do soils classes and dude. So I'll be honest with you between stuff. you and Doug Marvin and Jaron. Yeah. I think you guys all have Doug turf. Was, yeah. You guys all have turf science degrees and you guys were all, I mean, dude, the respect, I mean, I'm sure you're up there with Doug, but the respect I have for him is second to none. Cause you, I mean, oh, Doug. people don't, people don't understand. How, in fact, my, uh, the kid who used to work for me, Brett Lerman, same thing. He used to have a turf science degree and, and people don't realize how well, the, again, some of the best people I've known in the industry, you've all had turf science. If teams. I'm hiring someone and yeah. they say they worked on a golf course there, they got a job. <laughs> Just like, it really translates well from golf course to, to weed. Uh, Take note. If you're hiring out there, work ethic, golf people getting up early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Golf doing, course. My girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend worked at, she was going to be there like 5 a.m. Yeah, you know? I was there when I was superintendent, I was there at four 30 just to get ready, eating lunch at 10, <laughs> nine 30. Yep. Yep. So you're in the legal scene. Um, finally. Yeah. yeah. You kind of, you worked at some places, you know, I what were your incredibles after elite? I worked at incredibles and I ran and you actually, I mean, you have a unique kind of story of your own in the fact that like, you know, there are a lot of people, you know, I wanted to bring this up cause I thought it was, I, I'll be honest with you. I think it's really cool, but there are so many people that have tried to make it around based on some of the genetics that they carry with them. And they just haven't had the success that you've had, you know, whereas you've really been able to bring a spicy genetic catalog to places and, uh, and had it work out for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I so. try to I try to find breeders that, I mean, first you got to have the trust, you know, mm-hmm. a which is people, a big thing. Cause there's so many people, people that don't yeah. give me a cut that they know I'm going to. A lot of these kids it. nowadays, they forget about the code, yeah. you know, and that's, that's if someone gives you something and they ask you not to do certain things with it, you got to respect what they, it. what they asked you to do. And, it. and, you know, and it, I've been screwed over many, 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 many times in my life. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> It just, it just happens. It, it it does. You know, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm lucky in the fact that I've done well with it, but at the same time I've, you know, I'm same as you I've gotten, I've had all my genetics taken from me and people be like, yep. Deuces. Yeah. Yep. Beat it nerd. You know, so. I got a good group of friends that have mm-hmm. our genetics. And then now I'm in, you know, in Florida and we have my genetics pretty safe. And so you worked here in Colorado for a while. You worked at Incredibles. Incredibles you did yeah. some really neat stuff with those guys. You know, I remember touring your grow, um, you know, <clears throat> grow, weird, weird grow. <laughs> good, good team, good team over there. You know, great guys, great guys great Telly, guys. Max, yeah, you know, D- uh, Derek's one of the nicest humans. I've ever I'm met. actually want to get Telly in for an interview. Cause he's, He's, cool. he's like me. We're both BHO guys. I saw so. him uh, eat one of those, you know, those chips, the one chip challenge. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> he ate one of those. And I, I mean, I felt bad, but I thought he was going to die. <laughs> yeah. Telly's amazing. So you, you served your tenure at Incredibles, yep. you know, and 
And then you had an opportunity. I had an opportunity I could not pass up. Let's let's um, talk about the opportunity because I've been down there and uh and what you guys what you guys are doing is really, really cool. So yeah, let's let's it's talk awesome. about it. I would have never I've had a lot of offers around the country when I was at Incredibles. And uh, the guy at Incredibles that was the head grower, I was running one of the grows and he was kind of in charge of all of them, Chris Keller, mm -hmm. which you know, yeah. Chris. Yeah, I know Chris. Um, he got an opportunity. Uh, he knows a guy named Brady Cobb, mm -hmm. who's our CEO of our company. And he had an opportunity to go down there. And, you know, so he go. He went down there and he sent for me and uh, my buddy Trent that were both working at Incredibles. So I'm like, I'm, I'm going for it. The Colorado market was getting saturated. Yeah. We had one of the few licenses down there and um, the company Sunburn Cannabis is, well, let me go back. It was one plant when I went down there. Mm -hmm. So we, where I work for a company called One Plant, we, in one year, we sold it to Cresco for a whopping amount of money. They just couldn't refuse. So yeah, um, we didn't really own the One Plant name. So Brady Cobb, our CEO, always had a vision of wanting his own and naming it Sunburn. I'll explain that in a second. But uh, so we sold uh, that to Cresco and they turned it into sunny side stores. Uh, I worked for them for a year while Brady tried to acquire another license. Yep. So we tried to get the flowery. That deal fell through. Finally, we got MedMen. Uh, had built right place, right time, baby. Uh, ten stores down there. Yep, they put a million dollars into these stores. Oh, dude, they were Incredible. dumping money at the time. It's one of the reasons <laughs> they went out of business. <laughs> every location is insane, and every store is insane. They just couldn't. They're trying to grow wheat from California or wherever they're based, Vegas, whatever. Yep, uh, and it just wasn't working out. They were giving genetics to the Growers not even telling them what they were. Whatever. whatever. I'm not going to badmouth that. Man. But anyway, we bought, we got all their stores and their grow. Um, and just brought the whole team. Brady got the whole team nice. from one plant. Everyone was, I mean, that just goes to show you what a great guy he is. Dude, mad respect. Mad respect. And just. He had the right plan the from the beginning. Yeah, and everyone wants to work for the guy. So we got the whole band back together, uh, everyone. And a uh, couple, couple people didn't come. But uh, and then we just started revamping the greenhouse that we had, just making improvements, getting all their genetics out, bringing all... Dude, uh, I mean, I, I came down to visit the, the amount of care and time and education that you guys were putting into and money that you were putting into just curing the bud yeah. was because it's, it's, you know, people, <clears throat> the challenges that you're going to face in Florida is way different than the challenges you're going to face in New York. But what you guys were doing at your facility yeah, to take, to trim. mitigate that, dude, I was yeah. so impressed. We hand trim everything. Nothing goes through a machine. We, um, uh, we'll cut them off the stocks, hang them on, hangers <laughs> uh, you know old school and then they dry we'll put them into big huge turkey green turkey bags mm -hmm. uh, on the stock and then the trimmers will take them they're not even handling the bud they're handling the stock trim it and then it goes through another cure listen to that so, folks i mean uh, who puts yeah who puts a that lot of time into our cure because way I look at it, you can grow the best weed in the world. Ruin it. And ruin it, and ruin it cure. in a cure. Yep. It's the second most important. Yep. And having a having a good dry cure manager and someone who, again, takes care of the issues yep. and makes sure that it, it is done and right in a slow process. we acquired a guy from MedMen, a guy named Drew. Is that the kid I met? Uh, yep. He yep. was great. He was great. It, it, just the passion he has. Yeah. Oh, he was and so leaves, into it. Nothing leaves if if... The stores or, or whoever's in charge of getting the product to the stores is like, we need to get that. And it's not ready. It's not going anywhere. Let's see that. That's one of the things I loved about uh, visiting your facility was seeing yeah. that because there's just so few people that put that time in 
Um, but you, you guys, obviously, you know, the product you're trying to put out is on a different, on a different level. And we're Florida. Brady was born and raised in Florida. He so, has a really interesting story, which I'll tell you right now. His father used to run for. I was going to say, yeah, tell us, tell us, this is a, uh, you know, this is a great you story. You can this is a great it. story, you can bro. Read it online, whatever. His name is Bill Cobb, uh, Brady's dad. They live down in Key West. And he just one day, they offloaded a bunch of weed on trucks and they had nowhere to bring it. He owned a place about five miles outside of Key West, a big, huge farm with buildings and stuff. This is um, 70s, right? This is. Yeah, I'd say 70s. Yeah, yeah 70s. That's so, so cool. He had barns and he's like, they're like, we'll give you $100,000 if you can just keep this weed until we figure out where we're going to do it. He's like, no problem. He was hooked after that. So they started doing that a lot. It got heated in checkpoints going up the place. <clears throat> so they moved their whole operation up to Northern Florida and just. So the FBI got onto them and they named their sting oper operation sunburn. Mm -hmm. So that's, and he got, ended up getting arrested to 10, 10 years and fed. So where's the, where's the boat in the, in the thing come oh, from? That they use crab boats. So they would offload them off of crab boats. Uh, <laughs> and this is from Columbia and, uh, that's all crazy. Packed, so Colombian flour. Ton, tons of weed. I mean, millions of dollars. <laughs> just insane. I think it's, you know, for me, I think it's so great. I love this that he too. that he branded an entire brand after illicit like, activity. You. We're naming it. We're gonna name our company Sunburn. And oh, he's it's a fit. Florida guy. We're a Florida company. <clears throat> a lot of other companies that have come down are from other states, California, blah, blah, blah you know, jungle, whatever. Uh, but we are a Florida, a Florida run company. All, all the uppers all went to Florida state. So that's they're great. All, they're all, and you guys grow banging flour. I mean, I've smoked the flour and you guys have kind of, you have some of the genetics that you've brought in as staples, yep. you know, which is a lot of stuff that other people either don't have ha or have access to a couple grow or one of our hash guys has a really good connection. Uh, the guy that gets us good genetics, I mm -hmm. get good genetics. Greg helps us get good genetics. So, um, I try to get relationships with smaller breeders mm -hmm. and uh, like we have a shrink called Butterwolf. That's a guy from teaming with Terps. They're smaller breeders, but I trust smaller breeders better and they trust me and they want to get their name get out their there. name out yeah. yeah so it works out it works out that's good. great because i mean a lot of people have not been able to capitalize on you know being who they are or being able to have access to certain genetics so for me just in general you know I, I, again i've known you a long time uh, i've definitely known you as long as your commercial cannabis and, and i watched you at all these different places kind of have your trials and tribulations so the fact that you're doing well in it now is like Honestly, I mean, it, 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 I'm stoked. To, I'm stoked about it because it's like, man, like you're one of the real ones who's like held something down for a long time, and uh, and you're you're you know getting taken care of in the process, man. I appreciate that. Which which, you know, a lot of people don't get taken care of in the process, and then their genetics get hoarded out, and before you know no, it, I I wouldn't work with these guys if I didn't trust them. They're an incredible group of guys. They they have the attitude of we give the growers what they want and then we get the fuck out of their way. Mm -hmm. They, they know. they know they're good at marketing and shit like that and doing videos and, and running the ship. Uh, but they give a lot of trust in the growers. Oh yeah. Well, dude, I appreciate, uh, dude, I appreciate everything you've shared today. I'm, I want to share a couple of what would normally be, Jaron style questions, because yeah. even though he's not here, I still love some of the questions he asks, but, uh, what do you do for fun? <laughs> Golf. That, uh, I knew that, you know, <laughs> but I wanted to, um, it's like my main outlet is golf. I, I was like, buy a boat or get a, get a membership at a golf club down there. And I chose the 
membership at the golf club. So, so flower, uh, Florida makes perfect sense. Yeah. It's, it's good. Uh, who, who do you let, who do you look up to in the industry nowadays? Ooh, I look up to my CEO, the number one Brady. Yeah. Good, good guy. He's done so much for me. Uh, I have been following Brandon Rust. Yep. Uh, yep. Man, knowledgeable guy. <gasps> oh, dude, he's you know. I watch <clears throat> his stuff. I, I mean, I mentioned you know, our, you know, seems like a stand-up guy. I'm psyched to meet him someday. Someone, someone I talked to mentioned you know he's had a lot of time to read, so he definitely, <laughs> yeah. uh, smart, he definitely took guy. advantage of that. And and I mean, dude, as far as being on point, um, you know, I hope to actually get him on the show one day. Because yeah. he definitely is he a, uh, yeah, he is an unbelievable wealth of information. Yeah. And he actually, you know, he's the type of dude that cha- that pushes you to challenge yourself yeah. as a cultivator and, uh, you know, make you, make yourself better. But breeders and friends, uh, Graham from Crickets and Cicada, Graham, mm-hmm. um, I'm a big fan of his, JJ, of course. JJ is always, uh, yeah. Jason, Skunk VA. Uh, Greg, chem dog. Nice. Uh, my partner. Uh, so yeah, I got, I, I'm blessed to have a lot of yourself. I appreciate that. I, I'm blessed to have a lot of good friends. Dude, you've, 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 you've definitely made the rounds. And I mean, you know, I definitely, I don't hear anybody ever talking smack on you. You know, <laughs> I definitely, you know, you've, you've made a decent amount of friends in the industry. So, I mean, on a personal level, like what, what would you like to see? Like, there's a lot of people breeding cakes and gelatos and, uh, you know, what would you like to see in the future? Like, as far as like genetics, like where, where would you like to see it going? I'm not a big cake and cookies guy. I just, the taste is not what I like. And the effects are pretty weak in my yep, opinion. Yep. Uh, purples don't I'm a slap skittles guy i like skittles cross okay really in okay i didn't see that we have one coming out chem's fruit stand which is kind of like a mystery chem cross with the, the real skittles uh so it's you know fruity but with a with a kick to it i kind of like anything with expand you know expando mm-hmm smoke mm-hmm. It's shit that like just expands, in, expands your lungs. in your lungs yeah you gotta let it out um thick smoke you know, I'm a, I'm an effect guy. So that's actually very interesting. I, I got to interject because I've been in this cannabis content. Just, I've met a lot of people. My, the guy who got me smoking weed, he used to always say, Oh, this is the shit that expands in your lungs, bro. Yeah. You're the first person in this industry that's ever said it as like a quantifiable spando expando. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's the stuff for me. That's you just here. You heard it here you first. It, in, it, it, it gets in your lungs and it, 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 <laughs> yeah, I could, yeah. Out, if you've right? ever smoked it, you know it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so for the, for the people who have stuck around this entire episode, <laughs> um, what are some tips that you would give to people who are growing chem dog? You know, I always say to people, <clears throat> um, know your cultivar. Yep. And there are certain things that I, uh, identify as far as chem dog, uh, you know, enjoying, but being as you've kind of, you know, there are four different ones. So, you know, there's different things for each one, but generally they don't like a lot of light. They Mm -hmm. like it. I've done, I've grown in a lot of tents and they seem to, and in it grows, they seem to do better on the outskirts. So less light, they're heavy feeders, uh, cow mag through, Week seven. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I always say to people that they're heavy feeders and that they they, they metabolize eat, nutrients quite quickly. They eat hard. Uh, <laughs> they're they're finicky. Um, you want to like the D is more leafy, so you kind of want to get in there and deleaf it more. Uh, upskirt, you know, I always say yeah. to people to upskirt because it can be upskirt a little temperamental. Take, take a lot of leaves that are fan and bud sites and stuff like that. Take those off. Uh, but yeah, and then like day, like a lot of people take it too long in my, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it can turn, 
it can turn real quickly. Like you can go from people being ripe like, to being overdone. Yeah, and people like that they they think it's stronger. I mean, it's it's really strong at sixty days. Like all of them, maybe the four. Sixty days, folks. You heard it here from four, the man. Sixty days. Even fifty six to sixty two, mm-hmm. something like that. But uh, Chem Four could probably go a little longer. Um, ninety one, maybe. Yeah. Longer, <laughs> Seventy, maybe. But D definitely like fifty six to sixty, and it's right on point. What's uh, What's one of the things you really enjoy growing outside of Chem Dog? Like a different, let's say, a different genetic uh, that you're digging on. We have a on. strain called Petrol Station. Okay. It's GMO by Chem de la Sour. Okay. Super easy to grow. Big. Is that bugs. JJ? No, this is a guy in Strain Man. You know, okay. Strain Man. I got it. Stan the Strain Man? Yeah, I got it from him. Uh, he's the one who gave me the face off. Okay. I know. Yeah, him. he's good guy. Yeah, Stan's the man. Did a nice. Stan's the man. Nice he's actually trade. the Strain Man. Yeah. <laughs> Did a nice trade with him. So he's psyched. Yeah, he's no, psyched. he's he's a super good dude. You know, it's funny. Uh, Funny doing this episode today and kind of reminiscing about some of the people and, and experiences from the past. Cause yeah, it was, it was definitely uh, sushi is another good one we got. Oh, nice. It's really, it's, I've been skills, hearing a lot of good stuff. Of, I've been hearing a lot of good stuff about that. That yeah, tastes good. It's good all around. Pretty bag appeal. Nice. Nice. Well, dude, you want to give any, uh, you want to give any shout outs to anybody before we get out of here today? Just shout out to sunburn. If you're in Florida, come check us out. We got, Three more stores open in Miami, Miami Beach, uh, Tampa. Yeah. And one other one, which I forget. <laughs> We've got about 11, 12 stores around the state. So if you're in Florida, you got your med card, check us out. Excellent. Won't be disappointed. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for coming in studio today. No, thank you for having me. We super appreciate having you in. As always, uh, we love you guys. We love having you guys listen. We missed Jayhawk this week, but big shout out because he's always he's a good time. I mean, look, he's <laughs> said, you know, it's jug dealers, not jug dealer. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, as always, shout out to Jayhawk. Shout out to everybody who's stuck through and listened. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. Peace out.